Welcome to the Reinvestors Virtual Road Trip, where we are going across the country, coast to coast, interviewing real estate investors and professionals from each province, showcasing the towns they invest in so that you, wherever you're watching from, can get more knowledge of investing in other successful markets. Yeah, we've got an awesome guest, uh, Kevin. He has been an optometrist in private practice in central Alberta for over 20 years and has built a great real estate portfolio over the last 10, which is now up to 72 doors in a little bit smaller market in central Alberta that we're gonna dig into here today. He is married with three kids and even got his son to buy his first rental property at the age of 17, which is pretty friggin' awesome. Uh, he likes weightlifting, water skiing, and fly fishing. And he just landed his first book deal where he will be co-authoring a book with best-selling author, Brian Tracy, who is a pretty big deal in the motivation and self-development world. I just recently met Kevin and whenever we chat or I see his comments on Facebook posts, he always has something impressive to say. Now, without further ado, I'm really excited to get to know the Red Deer market a little bit more. Welcome to the road trip, Kevin. How are you today? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me, Randy and Steve. Yeah, we're stoked for you to be here, man. I know that uh, this is going to be a ton of value in this conversation, and we are really looking forward to it. Great. Before we jump into this, where can people get a hold of you if they wanted to reach out to you after they hear your story or things like that? Uh, they can find me on Facebook or LinkedIn or just even texting me, right? Uh, texting goes right to me, right? But uh, my cell number is 403-506-9839. And I love that. I love just the ability to share right off the bat with people and uh, wanting to help and support more people. So um, tell us about your story. Tell us about, you know, how you got started. Tell us about what got you into real estate and where you're at now. Okay. That's, uh, we'll try to boil that down. <laughs> uh, I guess quickly my story, I've been, I love my job as an optometrist and why am I doing real estate? It's not that I don't love my job. I love my job. I love what I do. But I guess my job is one where I'm the engine that drives my business. I mean, if I'm not seeing patients, I'm not getting paid. I don't get, you know, I, I don't get paid if I don't do eye exams. And I realized that 10 years ago when they thought I had cancer. Hmm. So if I was sick for six months, I realized we were in trouble financially. Um, I didn't like that feeling, you know, like I'm fortunate I married well. I married a doctor as well, but I didn't want to leave that on my wife to support the family alone and take care of a sick husband and three kids. So. That's what lit me up. That's what my why's been is making sure if I can't work for any reason, my family gets fed, my family's taken care of. That's uh, been my burning why uh, in the past 10 years. That's such a uh, incredible story. I think so many people can relate to that of, you know, that, that fear of what if something were to happen to me, what would happen to my family? What's, what's a day to day look like as a guy who runs a full-time optometry and then has a real estate portfolio of 72 doors? Like, What's, what's kind of the day-to-day -day life look like? Well, my mentors within real estate have been one that they've taught me well, meaning I've always bought properties where I can get professionally managed. I don't know about you guys. I want a lifestyle as well as, uh, you know, uh, I don't buy real estate so it own me. I buy real estate so I can enjoy more time freedom. So I've got a great personal assistant that helps me with property management. I've got two renovation teams that help me with renovations. So I've always bought properties that I can get professionally, you know, it'll pay for professional manage management. So I have time to invest in other activities that I have, like some of my pastimes, but just time with family. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Did you so, ever, did, did you ever manage any of your own portfolio starting out? I did. Yeah, that was maybe one of, I, well, I would say that's a good learning experience. It wouldn't be, as, I wouldn't say it's a mistake, um, but that's the only property I've ever sold is one of my outliers because it was in Alex, Alberta. It was like a half hour from where I live. I live there in the summertime. That's where my lake house is or our summer place is, but um, it was interesting. It was just one because it's a half hour away and I was self-managing that one when I had to show a property, I had to drive an hour round trip. Mm. go to take a look at that and really it's very quickly i didn't like that so much right? <laughs> um, before you know. we before we jump into uh the red deer market that you're going to talk about walk us through that process of where you bought your first property uh over on the lake there and then how you you know where you live personally in lacombe and then now into red deer how does that all connect to the real estate and how did you jump from place to place to place well i joined well 
10 years ago when I had that why, I wanted to get, create passive income. I didn't even know about real estate yet, if that makes sense. Yeah. I didn't even know, I, I didn't even know anybody that invested in real estate. Makes sense. I asked my dad if I, you know, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read that was given to me from a friend that he knew I was searching for passive income. He said, I read this book. I've got one rental property. Maybe it'd be of interest to you. He shared me the <laughs> book. I read that one. Another friend gave me 51 success stories of Canadian real estate investors. And that's when I realized I want to meet some of these guys. I want to meet Don Campbell. So I joined the Real Estate Investment Network, Rain. And that's where I met some of my mentors that gave me focus showed me where to focus on because it had a very specific goal 10 years ago. You know, I, it's interesting. I started with the end in mind. It was 10,000 a month in passive income. And I wanted that very, spe very specific. I wanted that in five years. I didn't even know how or where or how we achieved that. And the joke, you know, my mentors within rain showed me how to do it. So I think initially I was just looking at it initially looking at every deal. Like I was so, scatterbrained that I was looking at condos and houses and everything and all these listings and it wasn't until I had focus that I knew exactly how to get that 10,000 a month in passive income. And what made did you, you hit that goal? goal oh, of, like did you hit that goal of 10,000 in passive income in five years? Yeah, no, it took me six. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, I'll still give you a two clap. <laughs> Well, it was one that had that goal, right? It's, you don't necessarily, when you don't hit a goal right on, but I'd say that second 10,000 came faster. Nice. Mm. Makes sense yeah. than the first. So it's just something that uh, you set goals and just start working towards them. But I would say initially, as I said, I was very scatterbrained. I didn't know how to. I know investing in real estate was a great idea. They were teaching me how to investigate deals. But it was one of the people that came into my life, Peter Kinch. He's a mortgage broker out of Vancouver, but he's also a real estate investor. He's also an author. He wrote the Canadian, it was a Canadian real estate plan, um, which is just reading the book and actually having a consult with Peter Kinch was really helped me in a big way. Cause it said, Kevin, you want 10,000 a month in passive income in Alberta, you need four fourplexes paid off. That's it. Simple. So I was like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> right. Um, so is, that again, what helped, is that what helped you make the decision to move into Red Deer for to talk about the Red Deer market now and, and why you chose there? Obviously, close to home for you, but why did you choose Red Deer? What my mentor showed me was the importance of becoming a geographic specialist. So I know Red Deer is one of those areas. It's a, one of the large, it's in the corridor between Edmonton and Calgary, number one, poised for growth. I was one of looked to invest in areas where there's more population growth. And uh, why Red Deer was identified as one of the top tenant places in Alberta to invest in real estate. So it's okay. It's also a city I've lived in. So I know Red Deer. So I can know, I know some of the areas. And uh, now just becoming a geographic specialist, I now know which, you know, if I'm going to buy a fourplex in Red Deer, I know which areas I would want to buy in, which ones I wouldn't want to buy in. And if I'm buying in a certain area, which streets I'd buy on it, it's, so it makes it easier, not harder to identify deals and, and sort through them quickly. What are some of the cool things about Red Deer? Like, like what is appealing to it? What are the, you know, what are the purchase prices of the homes look like? What do the rents look like? What are some of the industries that are there supporting it? What makes it a good place to invest? Yeah, what I like about Red Deer is that, uh, again, we can buy fourplexes. I bought one a couple of years back for $350,000. Wow. Fourplex, it's about $900 a corner. And again, so it's not huge rents, but we can agree with that sort of affordability. It's fantastic. We needed some lipstick and rouge. We bought that property in 2000, I was like early 2018. So it's over almost two years now or a little over a year and a half. And uh, we bought that one, did some renovations. We refinanced that property for 460 six months later after buying it. Oh, makes sense. I built a pull a lot of our renovation capital. I was able to bring something, some instant equity to the table for my joint venture partner. So opportunities like that. Bought another fourplex for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Same thing. We renovated that within six months. That one had a drug dealer in it. You guys, like we had this portfolio is crazy. We had hookers and drug dealers. It was not good. Wow. Uh, no matter, wonder your cash flow in. Picking <laughs> up the tenant base, there were 50% vacant when we bought these properties, but again, buying them, renovating them, 
getting a good tenant base, just turning around that property in a big way, then refinancing, getting a lot of our capital back out um, and moving forward with it. So it's uh, opportunities like that that I don't see elsewhere, right? Yeah, before we jump deep into the, the deals, what are some of the rents looking like there? Like, what do you rent a one bedroom or two bedroom or what are you typically buying one bedroom, two bedroom? What do they rent for? Yeah, so again, with a fourplex, buying them for, again, I would say the average price for a fourplex between 500 to 550 for a fourplex. Unless they're under, I like ones looking where they're <laughs> under managed or in, in, yeah. in need of attention. But uh, that said, even buying a fourplex for four fifty, you know, five hundred, five fifty will cash flow easily in central Alberta in a down market. Mm. Okay, so it'd be the, one of the keys of investing in a secondary market that I've learned is, and it was always instilled in me when I joined Rain initially was uh, buy, you know, stress test your properties. Because they know there's investors in Alberta have lost their shirts because this is an up and down. We're in a roller coaster here, guys. It's <laughs> so again, but if it cash flows in a down market like all of my properties do now, can we agree when we go into a boom mode where where rents are much much higher than what they are now, we're cash flowing like crazy. So right now I'm buying properties now. If they cash flow positively now, I'm excited because I know they will cash flow extremely well in an up market. So we're making money in both markets. Cool. And what, what are those rents that you're seeing for one bedrooms and two bedrooms? Yeah. So my portfolio is two and three bedroom fourplex mm -hmm. units. And again, we're getting about, well, some small one bedroom ones would be $900 a month. I've got one, man, it's like, that's funny. We got a fourplex with four one bedroom suites and there's a waiting list for that one. It's unbelievable. Oh. Cause people just, some people don't want, I guess maybe with COVID, they don't want roommates anymore. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> Um, so again, those ones are going very quickly and it's a nice, nice area as well. Other ones are two bedrooms, two and three bedrooms are getting between like 950 to 1050 a door for a fourplex. That's pretty impressive. That's probably one of the only markets that we've seen across Canada that is at or real close to the 1% rule. Yeah. Yeah. Which I look at Edmonton, fourplexes are like almost double the price. But guess mm -hmm. what? They're not getting double the rents. Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, the cash flow is tighter and, but you're right. It is an up and down market. You got to know your market. Uh, but I just find red deer's easy. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> um, That's good. You got to keep it easy. It uh, definitely makes uh, a little bit lighter, um, yeah. lighter workload and less stress. I, uh, I want to, I want to take it back to the beginning here and, just like briefly touch on like what the initial motivation was back in the day when you first uh, felt like you needed to get started in real estate. The initial motivation is making sure if I can't work for any reason, my family's taken care of my, you know, there's that, re um, that fund. My, well, my initial goal was more just replacing my income with passive income or even a portion of it. 10,000 a month was that first goal. I realized that if I got sick, right, that 10,000 a month would be enough to take care of my family monthly. And uh, so that was my initial goal. You reset goals after a while, right? You start resetting goals. And then I realized that uh, just people within real estate, they've got thousands of doors, right? And the time freedom, they have time and money together, which blow me up, that blows me away, mm -hmm. right? And uh, that's, what I was, that's what I've been searching for. It's I've been working towards is just having more time with my family and being able to travel more. We've been able to do that as of late. Nice. Well, before COVID anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, that's an awesome accomplishment. And you have another just incredible accomplishment. Uh, somewhere along the lines, I can't remember what the timeline was, but at one point you bought 28 doors in one go. And I think if I remember right, they were all four plexes. Um, so walk us through like how you came across that deal and give us the details of, you know, what did it, what it cost? You know, was it all value add? Was it just uh, you know, undermanaged. What was that deal like? Yeah, so we bought seven fourplexes in Red Deer. Okay, <laughs> one that that was a neighborhood. We were buying a neighborhood. Makes sense. So you, can we agree? If you're buying one property in the neighborhood and the rest of them are run down, they have a bad tenant base. In situations like that, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. So again, I've got areas of again. I I have had opportunities to buy you know, fourplexes for super cheap, but I look at the rest, the next one next door has got boarded up windows <laughs> and 
you know, cars on blocks next door, I'm not interested. Makes yeah. sense. I have not the nicest fourplex on the street. So this is a huge opportunity. We're actually turning around a neighborhood in Red Deer. Hmm. So we've been doing some lipstick and rouge, like internal, you know, getting good tenants. But that portfolio is 50% vacant. Hmm. It was a, a lady whose husband had passed away. He was the investor. Hmm. She had to have these properties. I think they had them for quite some time, but uh, she was not the investor. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, for and sure. The management team she had wasn't caring for the properties the way they should or... Again, you have to manage your manager. That's kind of a key thing as well that I've learned along the way. So it's never a bad thing to self-manage a few of your properties to learn how to manage your manager. <laughs> yeah. so she never had that opportunity, obviously, but uh, we were able to buy them, improve the tenant base. Now they're almost fully occupied. I think we got one or two vacancies because we're just doing some renovations as they go vacant. Mm -hmm. But that whole portfolio, we've increased rents by over $200 a door in each of them. And wow, now that's huge. 95, almost a hundred percent occupied. That's incredible. Um, what was the timeline like from when you first found out about it into closing the deal? I'm just curious on what that like negotiation looked like and what that was it a long drawn out process or super quick and easy. So this is one where it's a joint venture. There's actually three real estate experts that are involved in this. I'm not the only principal in it, but uh, we raised 900,000 capital in three weeks to get it done. Nice. Well done. You know why we had to? Because if we didn't, we lost the deal. There was a backup deal for three, four hundred thousand dollars more than what our offer was, our accepted oh, offer. Wow. We were not getting any extensions. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> oh, definitely not. Yeah, it was a you know, so we're buying seven buildings, seven fourplexes at four hundred thousand each. Wow. Right? So again, now the valuations would be between five twenty-five and five fifty, but in an up market. These properties were worth six to six fifty. Oh, makes sense. Two thousand thirteen, maybe two thousand seven. These property values were significantly higher. So we we know there is that up potential for these properties in a big way. Mm -hmm. How'd you come across it? How'd you find it? Was it a broker that gave it to you, or was it just the neighbor that you knew? Or pocket deal. Pocket deal. They're buying fourplexes, they start to you know. <laughs> Another investor went to his mortgage broker. I want to sell four fourplexes. Well, you should talk to Kevin. He's buying fourplexes. In <laughs> so, uh, well, I don't know. It's, and as I said, it's, for me, is it easy? I can look at a deal. I can quickly make an offer sight unseen often. Of course, subject to in viewing and, and more due diligence. But I can quickly make an offer that, yes, that's a good value and I'm interested. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you can take action more quickly that way. What was the hardest part about pulling that deal off? Was it, I'm actually just going to leave that. That was the hardest part. I would say, you know what? The hardest part was getting past the fear. <laughs> There's the terror barrier. <laughs> there was just a few more zeros in the back of that <laughs> one that I was accustomed to. But when you break, break through the terror barrier, it's like, it's, you just kind of, I realized I was playing small. So well, let's go bigger. And uh, otherwise I may have passed over probably starting off. I might've passed over a deal like that, which had been foolish, mm -hmm. but maybe I didn't believe in my skills or my abilities or ability to track capital. So what was it then that got you through that bear of terror or whatever it was that you called? Was it just uh, a little bit of self-confidence? Was it just a calculated risk? What for you was the, the, you know, the catalyst to, to break through that? I just saw that huge opportunity, right? And I made a decision about three years ago, I was playing too small. Nice. At that time, I'm between, I don't know, recall exactly how many properties I had. I think I had about 30 doors at that time and quite comfortable. Makes sense? It was quite comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, one of my mentors that, uh, Andrea Workington, she's fantastic. Like she's a single mom of two kids. She's got, a portfolio that over 60 properties in Red Deer now. And she's a single mom with two kids in her late thirties, early four. I don't, I don't, she might've cracked the barrier 40 now. Maybe I shouldn't tell you, I shouldn't uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> at her age, but uh, just, you know, she was just one taking massive action. And uh, so again, I realized I was playing too small and Andrew said, Kev, I'm like, I'm just not taking action. What's going on. And, and she gave me the book, you know, the secrets of the millionaire mind. 
Mm. Nice. Yeah. And it was a decision I made after reading that book. I think I read that book twice while on a holiday in Mexico with my family. I just devoured mm. it. And I, just, I said I was playing too small. We have a, a saying or a motto almost, or even, even stronger than a motto. Uh, it's go big to give big. And for us, it is we want to push our level higher and higher so that we get bigger and bigger so that we can give more and more and more back to our community, back to the real estate you know, network across Canada and back to organizations like Kidsport Victoria that we absolutely love and cherish. And so it's so cool to see um, other people, not just kind of like, you know, be like, yeah, sweet. You know, you probably could have settled at 30 doors or whatever that was and been cruise control for the rest of your life. But because you have that mentality of, yeah, I want to take on a little bit more, I'm sure with that comes a lot of opportunity to give more too, whether that be just be time with family, give back to, you know, right to your community and organizations that you're passionate about too. Uh, so respect that fully. Um, if you had to do that deal differently, what would you do differently? I wouldn't have changed anything really, to be honest. Just it was one that we raised the capital we needed to raise. We're doing the renovations that we need to do. And I would repeat it, you know, and do it again, right? But uh, like you said, uh, Steve, I think what, that resonated me with what you said about giving more, right? Because it's a matter of now, part of my decision to go times 10 with my portfolio mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily 300 doors for me. I figured if I could help mentor 10 people to get 10,000 a month passively, check mark. Like, I mean, that, I figured I took my business times 10. And with that kind of mentality, some people have a joint venture with me. Some people have done it on their, I've got a friend. He was a joint venture partner of mine. He said, Kevin, I'm going to achieve my goals better. If I do this on my own, I want my capital back out. I paid him his capital. He's got 19 doors of his own now. Wow. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that, 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 in my mind, that's a check mark. That's just meaning that's something, okay, there's one, right? Having that big impact in somebody else's life. So again, if I can mentor 10, I've decided to up that goal dramatically. I want to, I want to, if I can impact thousands of lives, <laughs> that, that gets me excited. That's, uh, that, that gets me super excited guys. So yeah, go big so you can give big. So I, I, that resonates with me in a huge way. I love that in so many ways that's just so aligned with our mission and what we're doing. And while we're on the topic of partnerships and things like that, um, how did you find that transition or, or what made you want to do that transition to start bringing in joint venture partners? Probably lack of capital. <laughs> it makes sense. It was a matter of necessity because I say there was opportunities there and sometimes I wasn't taking action because I'd never raised joint venture capital before, hmm. but it was uh, even, Another book I read recently that kind of lit me up, it was uh, Money People Deal by Stefan Arneo. Mm. If you haven't read that book, it was just one that the book showed me if you've got the deal and you've got the knowledge, like I know Fourplex is inside out in Central Alberta, it was like you, you own, you, people think you have to have all three. You have to have the money, the knowledge of the deal. You have to have two of the three. To get a deal done, you have to own two of the three. Own it. Makes sense. Not just think it's a good idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or uh, yeah, punch. I, I knew the opportunity was there, and I we've got the experience when the renovation team's in place, and we found the money. Are uh, you finding these partners just through friends of your network? Or are you going out into different networking opportunities to find these people? Or are you actively uh, sharing your portfolio? Like, what does that look like? How are you bringing in different partners? One was a family member, another was a you know, friend, you know, so even, uh, it's interesting, one of my joint venture partners in that project is my dad. Mm. Initially, 10 years ago said, Kevin, I'm not interested in, it's risky, don't even do it. He told me not to. So again, it's just one uh, able to provide opportunities now for family. So like an uncle is your joint venture partner, another business uh, friend from Rotary. So just my Rotary Club, I've actually, at some joint venture partners. So it's just really just connecting with people and seeing what their personal goals are. Like if it, there are some people where they've got the money, but they don't have the time or experience to invest in real estate, they're great joint venture partners. And yeah. for others, they've got the money, but they've got the, they're super interested in real estate, investing in real estate. I just plug them in. I plug them in. I if they're going to hit their goals faster by not joint venture with me, Makes sense. I, I encourage them. I, I get them plugged in. They get them 
gets them some good education in real estate so they make good decisions and I'm willing to mentor and help. Makes sense? Because again, it's another, if I can impact another life and they've got 30 doors of their own or 300 doors of their own, that's, that gets me excited. So, but however, they achieve their goals faster. Yeah, I can relate that on so many levels. One of the things that started me was similar to yourself on your backstory around how your dad didn't get too deep into details, but just seeing your family and wanting to support them and help them. And um, we, Steve and I just recently did a deal and my parents invested in it and it was their first real estate investment. And I'm just excited to get them uh, flowing, moving. And a lot of people say that it's, it's challenging partnering with family and friends. And I'd be curious to know, what has you so confident in taking friends and family money? Because so many people say it's the riskiest thing to do and it's not a good idea. But I find that I'd rather them invest with me where I know my expertise and I'm so dialed in. How do you find that? It's a whole different level of responsibility, guys. You know what I mean? Because again, it's if I lose, again, but even for me, investing my own nest egg. Because when I started investing in real estate, it's everything we had, guys, 10 years ago. I was deep in debt, but I had this little, we had sold at one commercial property where our practice was in. So I had a little nest egg, but it was just, I realized if investing, buying a, you know, $450,000 fourplex back in 2010, my hands were trembling, shaking. <laughs> um, so again, at that point in my career in real estate investing, was I confident enough to, to raise joint venture capital? Man, those guys that do it out of the gates and do that right out with with limited experience, that takes some major kahunas. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> um, but even for me, just now knowing what I know and uh, more confident in the market that I'm in, right? Because there's times in Red Deer I was not buying real estate. Mm. 2013, 2014, because price for a fourplex was 650. Mm. At the time they cash flowed, they did, but I very I remember 2010 and I'm sure as heck glad that I didn't buy in 2013 because now in 2020, 2020, they would not be cash flowing now hmm. buying at that 650, they would be negatively cash flowing. You can't do that guys. Like if you've got a hundred doors, I don't care if you got five or 10 doors, if you're negatively cash flowing, if you take it times a hundred, you're screwed. Makes sense. <laughs> this is about financial freedom, not a, not a, the other way around. So. And you, um, you brought up a point there that, you know, big kahunas to guys that started out with, you know, no experience and no money doing JVs off the bat. And that's how Steve and I actually built our business, but it's guys like yourself that are willing to share their knowledge and support people and help people that Steve and I relied on. We leaned on guys like yourself saying, Hey, you've been here and done that. How do we get the confidence of this area, this market? How do we make sure our deals are secure? Do you mind looking and reviewing over our stuff? And that was what allowed us to be able to build a portfolio with no experience and nobody starting out. And so many people say it's the hardest thing to do, but just want to give you kudos for being so open and supporting people because that's what allows people to be able to get in and do that. So just kudos to you for that. Um, before we jump into our rapid fire question here, uh -oh. what's, what's, what's the future look like for you? Uh, are you going to stay in optometry? Are you going to retire? Are you going to go full time into investing? What's, what's your future look like? Yeah, I've got some big goals, guys. Like in the next three, four years, I want to be trapped. I, I love my profession. I love optometry. I don't think I'm going to retire anytime soon, but it'd be probably working less, traveling more. My goals, guys, though, I want to be speaking in front of thousands of people. Because just to give back makes sense. Because for me, I've had some fantastic mentors in my life that have shown me a way to achieve financial freedom in a way I've always dreamt of. And to be able to share that with other people and motivate and public speak. I had one opportunity to speak in front of 18,000 people in June of 2018. And that experience, guys, it was something that I'd never experienced ever in my life before. And I was just sharing my story. Make sense? About mm -hmm. my journey towards financial freedom. And you inspire 18,000 people at one time. It's just, it's a whole different level of brain chemicals go off. You know what I mean? <laughs> I realize I want to travel more, public speak more. And again, uh, I'm excited about that, right? So super excited about that. Yeah, it's an awesome goal, man. And we have no doubt in our minds that you'll make that happen. <clears throat> but uh, I want to jump into the, our rapid fire session here. And it's just a couple of quick questions that we go through with our guests and, you know, anything that's off the cuff, short and sweet. And uh, so starting at the top. What is one thing that every visitor to Red Deer needs to do or see? Do or see in Red Deer? 
bring your bike, go on a bike trip down the, 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 uh, an amazing path system along the Red Deer River. So I'd say if in Red Deer, Alberta, definitely take the paths. My home is Lacombe. So again, same thing here. We've got a fantastic trail system through Lacombe to experience the beauty of Lacombe. Like even on my back door, I've got a lake here right in Lacombe, uh, right in town here, but uh, some fantastic trails in both in Central are great. So bring your bike <laughs> or bring your walking <laughs> shoes. What's a local business you want to give a shout out to? A local business? Oh gosh. Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Um, I would say 360 Fitness and Red Deer. Just because of the impact that uh, they've had on my life. I've, I lost, and with those guys, I lost 20 pounds in... in what was the challenge? It was an, it's a 30 day challenge. Hmm. Wow. And again, so it was one that just had a big impact as far as motivating me to get in back in, in, uh, in, in shape. And again, I just want to say, give it to the, you know, them, cause they've been going through a tough time. They've been closed for three months now, but just the announcement that they're opening back up again, <laughs> that I can get back into the gym. So I'd say, yeah, just, uh, three sickness fitness, the personal trainers there are fantastic. And just, because I've got goals, financial goals. I have, you know, even spiritual goals, growth there. I've got mentorship there. But again, am I starting to stay in shape? You know, I just, you know, hire a personal trainer. That's what I've done. So I'd be that throw, big throw to 360 Fitness and Red Deer. Cause, and they're opening back up, which is exciting. I love that, that you still have that drive to, to be motivated and to learn from others. I think it's so important to have like coaches in the different gardens of your life. And whether it be fitness or, you know, relationships or real estate or whatever, uh, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And oftentimes you just need a little bit of push or a little bit of, you know, maybe just the missing ingredient and that can totally change, uh, you know, mentality, mindset, you know, uh, physical fitness, et cetera. Uh, so props again to you on that one. Um, if you could have a fireside chat with anybody dead or alive, who would that be with? I would say right now would be Bob Proctor. Mm. Bob Proctor. Okay. Because it's just, I'm, I'm actually studying Think and Grow Rich. I'm in a reading club at 7 a.m. Mountain Time every morning. We, <laughs> read, we read for 25 minutes and then we share for five minutes about Think and Grow Rich. Mm. What I realized, Bob Proctor studied that book for 30 years. Wow. wow. And I'm actually in a coaching program. I actually have a co mindset coach a full-time mindset coach I work with. And that's what I was doing before I met with you guys here. But again, we're studying Think and Grow Rich as a group. We're studying some of the thinking into results program with, with Bob Proctor. So again, I just, his, how it dug, he, deep he's dug into Think and Grow Rich, it just blows me away. So uh, I definitely want to meet with him. And mm -hmm. again, because he's still alive, that may happen. And uh, well, I'm excited about, okay, you know what? That will happen. I'll make sure that happens, right? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, if you could only give one piece of advice to somebody starting out, what would it be? Be careful who you're taking your advice from. It's the best advice. Okay. Because I always take advice from people that have achieved what I want to achieve. So if I'm going to take financial advice, I love my dad. I'll take marriage advice from him all day long. He's been married over 50 years to my mom, mom you know, mm -hmm. my, mom, my mom and dad, they, you know, you see them holding hands and loving each other. And uh, again, financial advice, you know, you go to those that have achieved what you want to achieve as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I said, I went to my dad t t 10 years ago, said, dad, I want to invest in real estate. And he told me not to. <laughs> <Makes sense. laughs> but yeah. I, Oh, and I love him and, he, and he's one of my joint venture partners now, but it's something that, you know what? Um, I took the advice of those very successful within real estate that showed me how to do it. And that's where I've, you know, great mentorship and, but they've achieved what I want to achieve. Right. Great, great advice for a spiritual life or whatever. Right. So, yeah. Would you rather have great partners, but bad tenants or great tenants but bad partners. I want both. I want it all. I want <laughs> <laughs> my cake and eat it too. <laughs> um, I'd, but you know what? The key to success in real estate is get good tenants. Because otherwise you're screwed. Um, 
That said, even you do your best due diligence, you're gonna get one or two bad apples and don't let that stop you, right? Because again, there's fear involved. You know, some people are afraid, oh, what about that bad tenant? I remember when we had our first tra suite trashed and it happened, it was very, it was my, it was my baby, right? It was my financial, um, that's my, it was my, that's my life savings or you know what I mean? You look at it that way and um, your comfort zone expands as you increase your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I think as you go experience, but uh, um, so get good tenants, but again, that's where I say mm -hmm. get good partners as well. <laughs> have similar goals because I think either way can create a lot of uh, challenges in your life. And we want more, you know, even more emotional freedom as well. And uh, having good tenants and good business partners gives you a lot more mo emotional freedom. Mm -hmm. Would you rather have the headache of 10 different partners on 10 different properties or only have one partner, but you can only get six properties? I would say match, <laughs> maybe I'm not going to explain or answer your question, <laughs> you may think, but I would say if you've got a large project, like as you said, with that one where we're buying 28 properties, we did not want 10 joint venture partners. Mm -hmm. We wanted, we actually have three joint venture partners on that one, right? Why? Because we didn't want a 10 headed dragon. Yeah. And when you've got too many joint venture partners in one project, your timelines are different. Make sense? But I would, you know, I'd say, you know what, 10 properties, 10 joint venture partners, as long as you match the project to the, to the joint venture partner, I think that's fantastic. Um, yeah, but awesome. never have too many joint venture partners on one project because you can, you're creating a monster. Yeah. Well said. Um, last, last question here. Uh, would you rather have to wear the same outfit for an entire year, rain or shine, winter or summer as is, or have a million dollars in your pocket, but have to start completely over? Okay, can you ask the question one more time? Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah, there's a the million dollars in my pocket to start over again. <laughs> um, versus what? Versus having to wear uh, the same outfit for an entire year. Well, I, there's very successful people wear the same outfit every single day, right? <laughs> so, um, but you know what? If I had to start over again, I would because I've enjoyed the journey as well as the destination. It makes sense. Like if you don't enjoy the journey, um, although the journey's not easy, can we agree guys, there's times in real estate that are challenging, but you got to enjoy the journey or you got to, you know, be passionate about that end goal. It'll get you through some of the challenges you have. But uh, I said, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm a snappy dresser, but it's not important. <laughs> That's important to me. Right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Kevin. We really appreciate it. And you've just been a, a wealth of knowledge and created a lot of light for people to uh, just see what you've created and inspire a lot of people along the journey. And I think a lot of people can be able to model underneath what you've been able to do. If people want to reach out to you again, again, just share with them, what's the best way to reach out to you? Texting, emailing, you know, get in touch with me with social media, right? Um, I'm old school guy, so I'm not really an Instagram kind of guy. I'm more of a Facebook kind of guy, but uh, just a matter of just uh, connecting. Cause again, if I can help in any way, right. It's something that for me in markets in Vancouver, I'd love to connect people with you guys. Right. Cause again, you guys are more market experts in that area. So just uh, people are reaching out. If you're, you know, if it's a question about fourplexes in Toronto, okay. I'm probably not the guy to talk to. <laughs> and so all right, I would look at connecting to some people very successful in the Toronto or Ontario marketplace out there, but, uh, cool. That's awesome. And, uh, if you, if you're watching, you want to connect with guys like Kevin and other people and follow along with the um, journey that we're going on and comment below on the video that we're going to be posting. You can hop into our reinvestors community on Facebook, just Google or just Facebook, the reinvestors community, and you'll be able to find people like Kevin and this interview getting dropped there. So, uh, thanks for watching this interview with Kevin. Join us on our next episode as we continue to interview real estate experts across Canada, learning about what strategies work where. Thanks for coming on, Kevin. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on, guys. This is fantastic. Of course.